To activate that healer within, we have to bring mind and body and breath back together again. The three of them together is strong enough to make a difference with this pathway of the rising evolutionary energy that's trying to make its way up to full blossom experience in this life of the whole self. When something happens that upsets you, whether it comes from out there or it comes from up here, ask yourself this golden question. To activate that healer within, we have to learn to listen for it and train our mind to come back home onto the true self and begin to pay attention in there the way that we've learned to pay attention out here. And what begins to happen is Welcome to the Inspired Evolution, and we have with us today, Dr. Sue Morta. Dr. Sue, how are you today? Hello, it's wonderful to be here. I'm feeling great and um, very excited about where we get to go with our conversation today. Oh my God, you and me both. For those tuning into Dr. Sue for the first time, hold your horses, give me two secs. She's an international speaker, master of bioenergetic medicine, and a quantum field visionary. She's the founder of the Mortar Institute for Biogen Bioge Bioenergetics. And Bioenergetics and the Mortar Institute serve as like a healing and wellness education. There's so much going on in there. There is so much ground that we could cover today, and I'm conscious of how little time we potentially have with you. So I wanted to start off, Dr. Sue, going straight into it and asking, do you ever look back at the younger version of yourself, like the, the version, you know, younger than 10, 12, maybe even, even younger than eight, and go, ah, you know, the the little the little girl version of yourself and say, ah, that she was always going to be you know, a healer or an activator of healing within others? Like, were there signs and symptoms of that early on? Do you reflect oh, yeah. upon that? Great. I have a fun question. So, you know, there was a part of me that knew that there was something deep and rich that was running through me, but there was another part of me that was not integrated, that was definitely out on the surface, trying to navigate the life that I was in and my external circumstances and feeling intimidated and super shy. And I withdrew from the world. I kind of slept on the floor of my closet as I was growing up because I was, mm. you know, just so intimidated about life. And so the fact that I'm you know, speaking globally and teaching in 95 countries and that kind of thing today is really mind blowing to me. But it happened as a byproduct of really getting those two to eventually meet each other, uh, those two versions of me from uh, way back then. So I have a great amount of respect and honor for the one who was intimidated uh, because mm. what she felt on the inside didn't match what she was seeing on the outside, but she hadn't really figured out how to navigate that. So, you know, she, so she withdrew. And, uh, and fortunately, uh, a percolation began to happen, an introspection began to happen, and, and that's really how integration happens for us, right? Yeah, that's fascinating because I, I can relate in so many ways as I'm hearing you share, share that. So the one that actually withdrew and is, you know, had to, you know, was a bit... Well, navigating the world a bit precariously. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, yeah. She is she the more abundant, energetically free spirit, like spirit version of yourself, or is she, yeah, would you say? Uh, now she is the one that is like you know, like the the yell that you gave out when we started. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's live because for the first yeah. half of my life, she was not, you know, engaging and and with very withholding and, you know, became very respectful, of course, because she didn't want to do the wrong thing and trying to fit in and, you know, navigate that. But mm. at, as this integration is occurring, uh, that portion of me is is definitely what is out there, you know, going for it, living life, saying yes, you know, taking what we would call a risk, but it doesn't feel like a risk to me anymore. It really feels like, uh, feels like an unfoldment mm -hmm. of what was really meant to be from the beginning, but we don't know that until we can, until we do. I find that really remarkable in your awareness, because I think a lot of us actually 
carry that when we're younger. There's, there's like, you know, there's a version of ourselves that is, you know, just unbounded and free and just, you know, riveting and riveted by everything, <laughs> you know, but then there's also this real social dynamic that we try to navigate. It's like, okay, like friendship circles, doing well in school and, you know, like trying to like fit, like spend so much time fitting in, um, so that we can be accepted by the tribe. And, you know, Obviously, education has a wonderful role to play in many people's lives. Um, but then also you've dedicated yourself to, you know, the the Mortar Institute. Like, yeah, are we – can you tell us, like, why did you dedicate yourself to also then, like, fast forward into now? Like, why does the Mortar Institute exist and what what did you see lacking in normal education or that we needed the Mortar Institute to be there for? Oh, you know, another beautiful question. You know, it, it, what happened for me was as I came inward, as I receded inward, but I mm. let go of the hiding or protecting disposition. And I just became curious about what was in here. You know, what is it that I am made of? What's happening here? And I was drawn to meditation. And mm. instantly I started having these transcendental experiences that illuminated me in another dimensional version of life, which was profound and not even something that I knew was possible. So I mm. certainly wasn't trying to make that happen. In fact, if I had known it was possible, I would have over tried to do it right and all those things never would happen. Um, and so when I did make those connections uh, with, with truly an exalted version of who I am and who we are, uh, there was so much reprieve and there was so much uh, release and so much healing that would happen because I began to recognize that we are each truly whole and complete and there is nothing missing and there is nothing broken and there is nothing wrong and all we need to do is learn how to to cultivate this true essential self and it will rise and it will authentically express and it will guide us in the path of life that we're supposed to be walking and in one in which we can bring our medicine to the tribe instead of trying to fit into the tribe we can make an offering to the tribe and mm. and when i began to see it from that perspective i was so inspired and so so exalted with the possibility of humanity being able to transcend their their duplicity their their one version of me is this and another version of me is this and allow them mm. to integrate and i knew that the, the peace and joy that i was experiencing that i wanted to just devote my time on this earth uh helping other people find the same and and i sort of knew that i at that point i knew i kind of came here for that this is this is actually part of the plan that that pain that I was experiencing mm. in my early years was actually part of how I was orienting and and that I was really just kind of called to be a teacher, to, uh, to share, to guide and to facilitate other people finding their version of same or similar. And uh, just the liberation that comes from that, I know, is what humanity is, you know, searching for kind of desperately. whether They know it or not, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I really see that in your body of work in terms of sometimes I feel like, you know, I've watched a lot of your, your videos and it's almost like you're holding space for, you can almost see the higher version of the other person <laughs> like in them. And it's just a matter of allowing them to sort of accept and acknowledge and integrate that. But in even, or, and even what you were sharing, um, there's a, there's a huge element of trust in there. Um, yeah, learning to be able to trust that you can be yourself. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. That that's enough, that it's okay, that it's not too much or it's not insignificant or insufficient in some way that it's just, it's just good. And people don't have the sensation in their inner realm that they are made of goodness. A lot of times, many people are kind of running from the feeling that something is bad or something is wrong or something should be different or something should change or that I mm. need to be a certain way to be accepted or to be a part of, you know, our society. And there are certainly a lot of cues from society that would confirm that and have contributed to developing that disposition, I feel, for so many. And, um, and, and the mind is the one who has a hard time trusting. And so... <laughs> What I am trying to allow people to realize is that they are not their mind, that they have a mind, but they are not their mind wholly and fully. 
And that when they start to identify that there's another version of them more deeply rooted and seated, that is this, this essential, true, soulful self, if you will, that they can uh, begin to merge their mind back with. And once they do, their mind starts to feel like it's not alone. The mind starts to feel integrated and supported with some stability that comes from our deep, authentic truth and our our essence, that, that the foundation of our being. And so I'm working with people how to uh, to learn how to cultivate the sensation of love in their body, for instance, not just mm. in their heart space, but lower in their body, in the solar plexus and lower down into the deep wisdom centers and even into the rootness of their system physically, and to mm. allow the felt sensation of love to really filter down into these aspects of their wholeness. And what begins to happen is their sense of self begins to shift and they just feel more like they belong, like there's not a barrier between self and the idea of other. And when that barrier starts to dissolve, there's just a greater sense of, of belongingness and the mind finds it easier to trust what's happening because it feels like it's already amongst family or amongst mm -hmm. a trusted, you know, a trusted tribe. And it doesn't have to do with the other people. It has to do with the environment, the vibrational energetic circumstance that we find ourselves in. And we're not dependent on the outer world creating that for us. We're learning how to create it for ourselves, which then allows us to more freely express into the outer world unconditionally which then attracts more unconditional relationship to us. And so um, we kind of get to experience ourselves as the creator of our life circumstances rather than finding the best way to navigate reacting to mm. our circumstances in such a way. I love that. It's so empowering. Can you tell me a little bit about why, because we hear a lot of people saying, come back to your heart, come back to your heart. And, you know, oftentimes one of my favorite quotes actually is the longest journey you'll ever take is from your head to your heart. Um, and, uh, but yeah, in, in your body of work, you invite us lower in our body, lower into our body, lower into our energetic centers. Can you tell us a little bit about, well, I love your awareness of the solar plexus. So <laughs> I'd love to tune into that at some point, but can you tell us a little bit first about why lower in your body and what your, what anchoring yourself into your body means in that? Yeah. Cause it may be a very foreign concept to some people tuning in here. Sure. So the solar plexus is just where the ribs splay apart and mm. it's an area about the size of a, a grapefruit or, you know, and such. It's, it's, it, it's not only that, but there's a concentrated area of it just right there where if you got punched in the stomach, it would knock the wind out of you. That, mm. That's the spot. And of all the energies of our system, there are different frequencies that are anchored at different layers of the body, different aspects of the physical body. And so there's a greater concentration of the energies that influence our mind or our emotions or our physical health, et cetera, or our ability to love or our ability to speak our truth or manifest and those kinds of things. And so, so the solar plexus happens to be directly related to the mind field, the use of the mind is mm -hmm. anchored right there in the solar plexus. And so many people are really contracted there and they don't even know it. And they've been contracted there their whole lives because they were always trying to like, oh, uh, waiting to exhale. Am I doing the right thing? Am I going to please my parents? Am I going to please my teachers? Is the coach going to yell at me? What's going to happen? And, and so all of that affects us right here in the body. And so what we want to do is to change the vibration there and as, I, as we were saying earlier, when the mind is operating on its own, it has a certain vibration. And that vibration is based in duality. So the mind has a good day. And, then, and while it's having a good day, it starts worrying about what happens if tomorrow's not as good of a day. What happens when this goes away? And so we're never really wholly, fully in the good day because mm. we start thinking about, uh oh, what if this disappears? What, you know, what if it goes away? What am I, I going to do to mess this up or, you know, whatever? And so... Yeah. We're really trying to get that to open up so that we're not just living in that dualistic world, but that we're allowing love, which is a unifying factor, to, to have a soothing effect on the physical body. And so overall, what I'm basically doing is getting people to learn to live underneath the story of their life 
and just work with the raw energy of their being. Because what science and spiritual, spirituality have been telling us, spirituality for thousands of years, science for the last couple of hundred years, that everything mm-hmm. is in Everything is spirit or invisible energy, and I consider them the same. And that even our physical bodies are compressed energy. Um, mm-hmm. Physical form is just compressed energy. Physical matter is compressed energy. And we just don't think of it that way. But if we start unpacking it, it all comes into this giant energetic field of possibility. And then it comes together in different shapes or different frequencies and so forth. And so. So what happens is we get hung up in our head. We get hung up in our mind and we're contracted in the solar plexus and it equates to having a contracted mind. We have a limited uh, vibrations that we're comfortable with and we have to get rid of everybody that does vibrates in any other kind of way. It's just not okay. So what we're doing is teaching people to feel the energy with their bodies and breathe with the energy and cultivate the energy, not just love, but a variety of energy frequencies and also just becoming available to sensing and feeling what is going on in here. Because what Mm. is going on in here is actually the collection of billions of bits of information that are bombarding our system every millisecond. And they're trying to rise up and gather and organize and come up to through our hearts and into our heads and be translated through neurotransmitters and neurological impulses and electromagnetic energy flow and so forth to into images and thoughts and impressions and ideas that serve our lives and help us you know, develop and guide our, our life path. And what happens is they get stuck here at this mental body level at the solar plexus and a mm-hmm. byproduct of that is we... We keep overthinking, trying to figure out what's the problem, what's the problem, what's the problem. What's the problem? Yeah. And then we develop another day spent in problem-based you know, focus. And so we don't get any better at being a creator. We just get better at searching for and maybe finding and then maybe fixing problems. But that's really not tapping our full potential. Our full potential is to be creative, not reactive, not to become a better reactor, but to become mm-hmm. truly a masterful creator in our lives. So... That kind of kind of briefs love, the uh, the gist of what we're doing. <laughs> I love <laughs> that. Um, I do have a question around posture and energy, and you know, like because you certain you, you oftentimes sort of see people locked in certain postures and the way they hold themselves and carry themselves, and. <clears throat> I think the obvious one is, you know, when your shoulders are hunched over and you can sort of sort of see that and you can say that, oh, that person looks like they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders and you sort of, you can, you can actually see that, you know? Yeah. 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 And, um, and I'm going to use that as a bit of a segue to, you know, there's a, there's a very beautiful gift that you've offered our community called Activate the Healer Within. But I do want to ask that as a question today as well is how do we activate the healer within? And I'm sure the meditation is going to be, um, and well, I should let you tell us about the the meditation. Um, But yeah, even just the journey of how do we then, you know, being aware of, okay, like my mind is overruling a lot of things. Potentially there's this part of me that I know is free and abundant. I want to integrate that into my life. There's a whole bunch of social dynamics that may may have inhibited me from that. Um, How do we really start to, once we become aware of that, activate the healer within? First, that there is a healer within, and then how do we turn it on, right? Because a lot of people don't even think that there's something in here that could resolve the issues in my life. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and I like to share with people that if, if energy isn't flowing through your body, the proper Mm -hmm. way, the, you know, or even close to the ideal, not the ideal, but, you know, moving in that direction, um, then, then it isn't happening in your life. What, if it's not happening in your body, it isn't happening in your life. I have a, Mm -hmm. I have a little image I could show if that, if we have, is that okay? If I just, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me see if I can, uh, grab one of these and, uh and show you it's pretty pretty amazing okay so so the universe is here's the universe and here's the physical body and and Mm. this is actually what we're made of we're made of energy and this energy compresses into a funnel into a channel and it descends to the earth hits the earth rises up and cycles it rises as high as it can go and then it starts to fall around and it gets taken Mm. back up again and it falls over and gets taken back up again and it falls over so it's constantly doing this And that repetition is where the physical body begins to form inside of that flow. These are bioenergetics. It's measurable. It's that's the system that's actually happening. And then what we do is we take that and we project it out in front of us. 
So mm. how the energy is doing this determines this movie that we shine onto this movie screen. So if my hand is a movie screen and we're just mm -hmm. shining it onto that and we're walking through that movie, you know, all of our lives, that's what we're doing. Mm. So what happens here then determines everything about how that's going to go. Let me show you just one more thing here that that here's how what I was just describing in its ideal that would would be happening, that that energy is coming down, hitting and cycling. And here's mm. what's happening. With most people the energy comes down, hits the earth. It starts to rise up and it hits these limiting thoughts or beliefs or these areas of ourselves that have mm. never been activated or animated or called forth in any way or or been shut down because of some painful experience in our lives or whatever, whether it was our our identity, our personal power, whether it was our ability to speak our truth or what have you. So here's what happens. That energy hits, rises up, and it has to start going around these areas that mm. we've shut down or that Compensate. have never come online. Compensate. Mm. So it takes up a wobble as it's rising. And when the energy takes up this wobble when it's rising, it starts to have a distorting effect on the mm. energy field. You see how this is distorted from this one. And that yep. distortion creates a reality for someone. So now this person is standing in here looking out through a distorted energy field. And what this person sees is a distorted reality. They see that no one cares about them, that they're not connected, that they have to seek, they have to either prove everybody else wrong or somebody else wrong, or they have to find somebody to make them okay, mm. or things that we get into because it puts us in a perpetual state of fear. And so what we're wanting to do is get this looking more like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but every little bit that we start to come through here and instead of going around it, we start to build pathways right through it. It begins to stabilize the field. And then we are, um, we are living then in a less distorted personal reality. And so, um, so what we're, what we're, what we're finding is there are a variety of energies that facilitate that circuit building instead of going around them, we build circuits or pathways right through these gaps in the space. And uh, by doing so, we stabilize who we are, who we perceive ourselves to be. And then we're more comfortable. And when we're in that more comfortable state, the fight or flight aspect of the nervous system starts to harmonize. And all of a sudden, we're not hyper vigilant about mm. where's the bear, where's the bear, where's the bear. We're more like, oh, you know, look, it's a teddy bear. Let's you know, go play or whatever. So, um, so these are um, these are some of the things that are helpful for people to to recognize regarding the healer within. Mm -hmm. Paying attention right here is the healer. When we bring the mind onto this area, it mm. begins to magnify the energies there. And when we magnify the energies there and start breathing up and down this central channel in such a fashion that it starts to carve that new pathway instead of the wobbling compensatory mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we start having a greater sense of self. We start speaking our truth. We start having a different um, uh, image of or idea of of who and what I am and how to engage with others, et cetera, becomes less and less threatened. And so the, to activate that healer within, we have to mm -hmm. learn to listen for it and train our mind to come back home onto the true self and begin to pay attention in there the way that we've learned to pay attention out here. Because when we were born, we kind of landed and sort of splatted. And in that splat, our mind goes one way, our body goes another way. We don't know what the heck is going on. We're just looking around like, what happened? Where am I? And who are you? Yeah. And so <laughs> we have to learn that it's okay to turn our direction back here because we've been externalizing our attention. How do I fit in? How do I do the right thing? How do I keep you happy so you keep feeding me? How do we navigate this? And we're externalized in our circuitry. Our sensory system is, is turned outward and it needs to turn inward somewhat in order to activate the healer within. Because when we do so, the mind magnifies whatever we put, it, we put it on. If we start thinking about a problem, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and consumes our life. And if we start thinking about, oh my God, look at the beauty of the sunlight flickering on the water right there. Look at the leaves just kind of blowing in the wind. Oh my God, the miracle of life. And 
and look at how how much I've I've had in my life to be able you know to be able to to spend time really getting to know someone to really connect or feel heard or 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 be there for someone else when when we start really dialing into that as a value what happens mm. is our our vibrational radio station changes and we dial into something else that magnifies likewise if we turn our attention inward and start breathing and sensing and feeling uh, you know what's going on in here because when the energy hits one of these spots mm. and goes around it when it comes up here and hits this and then has to go around it and then hits that one and has to go around it hits that one has to go around it we can feel that we can feel it in our body mm. and it feels like a knot in your stomach or a lump in your throat or tightness in your chest or those physiological responses are trying to tell the mind you know we're not we're not getting it all together just yet come back in here we need to have a do over we need to start up again and get through this in a consistent fashion instead of just deflecting around it going around it bypassing this or bypassing that and making do in some way because it ultimately isn't allowing me to express my wholeness i'm getting really good at some things and i'm really lousy at some other things and uh and that's not life that's not a life that we love living. That's a life that becomes one that people start outrunning because mm. I'm not very good at this. I hope nobody taps into that. So I'm going to go over here and, you know, distract them with, with all these talents or gifts that I have over here. Uh, never mind that. Um, but mm. in the long run, we start developing health issues or we start developing stress issues or we have a sense of depression or anxiety. And all the while, those felt sensations are are really the byproduct of what I'm showing you here with how that energy flows. So to activate that healer within, we have to bring mind and body and breath back together again, because mm. the, the three of them together is strong enough to make a difference with this pathway of the rising evolutionary energy that's trying to make its way up to full blossom, you know, uh, experience in this life of the whole self. So but when we try to do it with just the mind or the body or the breath, it never works because they're not powerful enough until they're together. That's the last thing I wanted to say there. So, so you were going to say something. I mean, yeah, I was, um, well, early on when you showed the, the images, um, I found it quite profound because even just looking at it, I felt my spine sort of did this re like, Oh, it just felt like I had a breath of fresh air run up my spine. <laughs> and so I think the awareness of the, of the energy is is like you said, point one, super, super important. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, the other point that you remarked upon, which I think is very fascinating is like you said, again, when we're living from this disrupted state, I'm just going to call it that for now, when we're living from this disrupted state, we still have all this stuff that's calling us and, you know, it feels like our abundant self and it, that stress, that sort of agitation, then it can lead to, you know, unwellness, illness, dis-ease, you know, that, it was a very profound point that you just sort of mentioned in there for me as well. Um, yeah. Now I'm conscious that the, the next question that probably that the listener wants to double down on <laughs> is, um, you know, now we're aware of the energy and we can sort of see what symptomatically it looks like. And I'll use myself as an example here. I am conscious that I don't always breathe into the bottom of my belly. And am I meant to always be doing that? Am I always meant to have that? Or like, you know, sometimes I can feel that I'm quite shallow breathing. And I've actually learned that as a symptomatic thing of me recently is like when I'm working for extended periods of time, I'll just notice and I've actually just stopped breathing. Hey, like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just holding my breath. And it's like, dude, just come back, <laughs> breathe, you know, and because I've got an amazing practice of meditation where I like tune into my breathing, but then now like integrating that into your day to day life and how the quality of your breath throughout the activities that you're doing consistently. Um, and I found a little hack for myself, which may be completely out of context in this space, but it's like, keep my diaphragm pointed upwards is something that I've just been focusing on. And it's been like a real, it's just been a game changer for me recently, just like, because I just feel like when I'm not breathing, I'm sort of hunched over. And if I can just yeah. breathe on my diaphragm's point, do you have like, obviously we have, for those that are tuning in, we'll put the link to the meditation, activate the healer um, in the show notes below. But do you have pointers for how we start to work to unblock, um, yeah, these energy blocks? Beautiful. Yes. So a couple of things. One, I love that you've discovered the solar plexus and the diaphragm is the same, you know, that I'm talking mm. about that same area in the body. And so 
when, and it's one of the number one things that I, that I invite people to do. I, I teach a form of yoga called body awake yoga, where we're anchoring the consciousness in the core of the body for this activating the healer purpose. And one of the things that we do so often is, is reach back, you know, sitting, seated on the mat, we reach back and just lift the chest, raise it up. And then the focus is below the heart in this mm. area where the ribs play a part and to stretch it open. And, and we have a variety of, of, ac- of actions that we, that we do that do help to stretch that open. And even just softening it, just melting and breathing as you tip it upward is mm. going to allow for the breath to come down through that into your lower belly. So the fact that you've discovered I breathe shallow and I have this diaphragm thing going on, uh, they're, they're the same. They're, one is causing the other. That mm. when we open and soften in the solar plexus, we can more easily draw the breath down into the lower belly without a hitch, without any sort of um, uh, by, uh, bypass or hijack that happens at the diaphragm. As soon as we are in fight or flight, that that t- diaphragm tightens up and we start breathing in the upper lobes of the lungs in order to activate our sympathetic nervous system, which allows us to fight or run uh, more easily. Yeah. And so the problem is when we breathe up there, um, it activates that part of the nervous system, whether it's appropriate or not. And so mm-hmm. we can be sitting at our desk or whatever and just shallow breathing like this. And what we're actually doing is stimulating the sympathetic nervous system, which is in charge of if a bear came through the door, you have to activate the sympathetic nervous system or, you know, you're out of here. Mm-hmm. You're so, mm-hmm. so in order to keep your system dropping down into parasympathetic dominance, which was, which is allowing peace and creativity and healing and nurturing energy to take the forefront of the focus in the body. Um, and that happens when we breathe into the lower lobes of the lungs because they have more nerve endings that are for the parasympathetic nervous system. There are more blood vessels in the lower lobes of the lungs, which allows us to oxygenate our blood more quickly, more readily. And when we have more oxygen, it again triggers the nervous system to relax uh, because we need so much of that to to perform that when there's a lack of it, it feeds the fire. So when there's an abundance of oxygen, the system is like, you know, oh, okay, we're going to, you know, live, live another day. We're going to make it. Mm-hmm. And, and then creative genius can kick in instead of survival strategies running our lives. And so, so in that, um, you know, well, that's, so that's one thing that we want to do. Another thing to realize is that when we get upset about something that we're thinking or upset about something that someone is doing Mm -hmm. on the outside world, we don't just get upset. Uh, There's actually a charge in the body somewhere, and it will be reflecting where we don't have our circuits in place. In Mm. other words, these circuits aren't hooked up and this isn't flowing like this one we will have we'll feel like oh that just got me in my gut the moment they said that yeah right the external circumstances shining a light on what's going on inside yes that's that my friend is the pure soul reason for external circumstances we come here (sighs) to this dimension and we slide down into a movie that we're creating we're co-creating so that it will poke us in the places that we want to awaken in this life. We you also invite- mentioned, oh, sorry, you also mentioned recently, like your friends and your foes are actually yeah. both like, they're both same. What? Yes, yeah, same, same. I was like, oh, we're same. really going deep here. Can you, yeah, can you, sorry. I thought that was just appropriate to tuck in there. Yes. Beautiful. Same, same. They're here encouraging, nurturing, and stirring, and activating, and encouraging, nurturing, and stirring, and activating, and and all of the above. It begins to become this washing machine so that we can get, you know, this this one to look like this one. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's why we come. And here's the beauty of it, is that every little time that we, you know, build some circuits through one of these, uh, there is an, an, an experience of joy and bliss that that we can experience no other way. So if we can just make life about, ah, okay, bring on the next one. I'm interested. I'm curious. <laughs> bring it. You know, whether it's friend or foe, bring it. 
because I know that all of it is going to serve the washing machine here. And if I mm. can have enough confidence to let that be true for me, then I am not guarding and protecting and avoiding and so forth circumstances that are unpleasant. I'm utilizing them kind of in a spiritual practice sort of way. I'm polishing myself uh, because of them. And, uh, and it allows us to be less afraid. And that's, that is the healer awake. When the healer mm. is awake, that's the attitude and the disposition that we are taking on. It's almost like, you know, if, if someone's very trained in fencing, they want to spar with another. No, I'm, I'm not. So, you know, don't anybody write to me and say, okay, I'll, I'll point my sword <laughs> at you. I don't know anything about it. But, but if anytime you're good at something that requires that exchange, uh, you come to know your excellence by how how much excellence the opponent has. And that's mm. kind of what this world is supposed to be offering up for us. We just didn't know it. So it feels like, oh, my God, I'm in the boxing ring and I didn't even get gloves. I didn't bring my gloves. You know, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. And mm. and it isn't it isn't about surviving. It's about polishing and refining yourself. But until we realize that we are whole and complete and we've got this, it's it's challenging to take on that disposition because, you know, I want to have the confidence to to take it on that way. How do I get that? And so just lastly, I'll say that when something happens that uh, upsets you, whether it comes from out there or it comes from up here, um, when you're in the upset, ask yourself this golden question. Where in my body do I feel activated because of this thought or this situation where yes i'm upset but where is the upset accentuated and the mind mm. will go straight to it it'll go right here or right here or right here or right here or here somewhere it's going to show up it's going to show up in one of these areas mm -hmm. because it is it has to do with the level of consciousness that is not yet integrated mm. and and it's not integrated. That's what these gaps are that we're looking at. There's a lack of integration. It's like a road that has big potholes in it that you have to drive around. And mm. and so when something upsetting occurs, it upsets you because of a lack of integration. If you are fully integrated, it can happen. And you're like, oh, I see what's happening here. You know, and, and there's a logical, rational evaluation instant that you can recognize. Is this about me or is it not about me? If it's about me, I'll take it as a learning moment and I'll build some circuits with it. And if it's not about me, I gracefully hold space for this other person or this other situation to work it out for themselves. And I'll even show them how I do it if they're interested. So, mm -hmm. so, so here's what we do. Let's say we're in an upsetting situation. And oh, we feel it like, oh, my God, that shot of adrenaline that goes through the body or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here's the golden question. Where did that come from today in this situation? Where did that come from? And my mind is either going to go here or here or here or here. It's going to go somewhere in the body. And my invitation is hug it, hug that area, squeeze it on the inside to, so that you can stabilize your mind right there. Like, I'm not going to miss this because mm. this for me to build circuitry right through an area that's not integrated. So I'm mm. going to do it. So so I hug it so that my mind can find it and, and, and the mind's going to be wobbling and reeling and trying to come up with a comeback or an escape route. It's going to do one of the two. And we want it to not do I, either, but to stay right here, to stay centered and grounded and present with what's happening. And if I can do that, then uh, I can find why this is happening in my life. It's serving me in this area or this area or this area, which has to do with my ability to speak my truth and manifest or my ability to remain in love no matter what, or my ability to know who I am, even if someone is challenging or threatening or I feel, you know, in, um, in an unfamiliar circumstance and I feel this, you know, this anxious type of feeling in that solar plexus, which isn't anxiety. It's actually power that's trying to birth, but we keep shutting it down. But that's another story. And or it's lower in our wisdom or what have you. And so hug that. And then I start breathing up and down this central channel. I start breathing up and down here. So I would inhale from the earth up to my belly and then I would exhale right up out the top of my head. And you just kind of have to intend this and make it up. Uh, but it is a measurable system. The toric field is a fact of bioenergetics, the body's mm. energy field. 
And so then we would take a breath from above our head, right down through the center of the brain, through the center of the throat, through the center of the chest to the belly, and then exhale right down into the earth. And then inhale from the earth right up in through the body again and exhale up and out the top of the head and start getting this happening. Because when we start breathing this way, this whole system starts moving. It starts moving. We move the energy. And that moving energy, if, especially if you're hugging the area that just told you, I'm not integrated. How do I know? Because I just feel like I got kicked in my chest when you said that thing. Or I got mm. my shut down when that thing was announced at work. Or, or this, you know, I got this email and, oh, my God, just clamp down. Clamp it back and let it know that now the mind and the body and the breath are going to work together instead of mm. separate entities. That the mind is now listening to the body. This, 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 the truth, the soulful self speaks to the body, and the body is trying to speak to the mind. But the mind is busy writing stories and accusing other people and doing all kinds of other things. It's not even home. It's not even paying attention to what's going on at home. And so we're teaching people how to like bring it back here and breathe through that. And then what will happen is you'll start to feel something relax. And it's because mind and body and breath are working together to carve through an area that has been being avoided or circumvented for who knows how long. And the byproduct of that is the flow stabilizes instead of wobbling, the field perfects instead of remaining distorted. And the next thing you know, the individual feels like, you know, I'm actually glad that that person said that thing to me because I learned so much about myself in that moment. And the next time I'm exposed to something like that, mm, it won't impact me. Uh, mm -hmm. The same. I don't know that there's something beneficial, you know, just around the corner. If I work with it tangibly and I do something with it, if I if I manage with the energy instead of living in my head, you know, upset that they would even say such a thing to me or yeah. whatever, or that my luck is always so bad or however it might be for someone, that we can stop doing that and turn this world into something that's actually supporting our upliftment and our awakening and our, our lucid living and, uh, and the life that we really love to be in. If we just turn it into moments of support instead of, you know, something that we have to fight against, um, mm. we change it. We change the world that we're living in uh, because of how we're looking at it. So there's a wow. long answer to your healer within, but yeah, but it, <laughs> Yeah, it's the, whole, it's the whole shebang. That's why we're, that's why we're here. There's a few. Thank you so much for sharing that. There is so much in there. One of the points where I, yeah, I think there's a particular point in there which I just I I, I was sort of coming through to ask the question, which is about the power and the anxiety bit because I think a lot of people that I know that uh, actually one in two of us are anxious or depressed. Apparently, the metrics are out. Um, and you said anxiety is. Um, just power waiting to be birthed. Can you describe that a little bit more, please? Yes, indeed. So let's go back to our <clears throat> image here. Let's mm. say this energy is trying to rise and it hits right here, or it hits right here. Let's say there's a mm. blockage right there. And that's at the level of the heart and our personal power. If we feel disempowered at some time in our life, we almost always close down our hearts to protect. Mm. And that shuts down that diaphragm and constricts it. And now I'm safe. Now I'm safe. I'm going to be miserable, but I'm safe. Okay. And so at some point it's going to make me not breathe well. At some point it's going to affect my chemistry. At some point it's going to keep me from feeling patient and in love and all those kinds of things with in love with life and that, that type of thing. And so we don't know that in the moment that it's happening, but over 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years, it's the inevitable outcome. I've been watching mm. this kid and my father was a, a pioneer in energy medicine so he was talking about these things at the dinner table so i've been literally watching and observing this for for probably 50 years and that's a long time in our in our world and so so what we know is that if if we can allow for an opening here the energy that is getting blocked underneath that will be free but until mm -hmm. that energy is freed up it pools right here underneath the blockage underneath the blockage between the heart and the solar plexus it's another so one the, of those symptoms showing you that something's up yeah yes so that rising energy is is circulating in there and eventually mm. it's like hey you know let me out of here you are <laughs> containing me yeah i feel detained i feel caged what's going on and it's it's trying to hatch through there 
Mm. And and we think of the vibration is here's what I have no, have known in working with people all these years that when the solar plexus is getting ready to open and integrate, it starts vibrating just like a little egg vibrates right before the little chick pecks its beak through the shell and starts to come up and out. The egg mm. vibrates and will even bounce across a table if it's sitting on a hard surface. And then boom, the little beak comes out. That same mm. vibration is happening in our solar plexus. And we've been taught that that feeling which is actually our power trying to rise, that feeling, we've been taught that's anxiety. You have to get away. You have to run away. Mm -hmm. You have to shut that down, get away from that person or shut them down or whatever because you're because you're you're at risk. But it's not that. That's the illusion. It's actually that your power is trying to rise to your heart. Your power is trying to express and we keep shutting it down and shutting it down. And what's mm -hmm. worse is that people will take medications for their anxiety and now they're not even aware when that that vibration is happening and they think that they're better except that they're just becoming disconnected from what's really trying to happen. So there's an order in which we would approach a situation like that. It's not that being on medications is bad or what have you, but but what we know at the end of the day is that we have to address these things because there's no amount of of um, of, a, of a medication or, or altering ourselves in any way that is ever going to address the cause, it will just address the symptom. And if we mm -hmm. don't address the cause, it will eventually infuse the, itself into the organ system and the glandular system and the chemistries of our body will be affected. And there is a direct relationship between these different energy centers and levels of consciousness and the parts of the body system that get affected by them being encased and locked down and, and encaged in some way. So we're just, you know, saying, you know, time out. It's okay. There's not a problem here. There's a solution that's trying to happen. And you don't know mm. how you have been taught how to interpret it. And so you keep running from it or trying to suppress it or control it in some way when actually it's trying to show the mind that there's another version of you that wants to rise up here and collaborate with the mind. And it's mm. the power of the soulful self, like the true self is on the rise. And, and we keep shoving it down and it's like it will not be contained. You know, if our stubborn mind keeps shoving it down, we become, you know, hypoglycemic or we become cancerous or we become, um, you know, whatever the expression is for every individual, depending on where that suppression is happening. And mm. and all the while we have the opportunity to uh, embrace that, to turn it around, to heal it. But we have to get the energy flowing again. We have to allow we have to set it free so that it can do what it already knows how to do. Mm -hmm. And we have to the mind to learn how to surrender enough to sense and to feel and to pay attention to what's going on in here. So I have to ask the question. I'm conscious of how much time we have left. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Alcohol and coffee, what do they do to our bioenergetic fields? Do they, are they disruptors or are they fine in moderation? Yeah. Your thoughts, your awareness? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. Darn the luck, I'm going to say. There's no amount of it that enhances what I'm talking about. There are mm. amounts of it that we can get away with, and mm. it won't it won't disrupt what's trying to happen. If we are if we are drinking one cup of coffee a day and we're eating lots of alkalizing foods, <clears throat> foods and vegetables, and we're cleansing our bodies, you know, a few times a year, and we're we're just being conscious about that, then our body can handle that. It's when we are doing the, you know, the big venties and the multiple times a day and we're carrying the cup around with us all the time or that kind of thing or the alcohol is on a daily basis um, more than just a, a small glass of wine. I mean, you know, in, in France, they've run many studies that, that a small amount of red wine every day has actually been helpful to their way of living. But I don't think that it's actually the wine that's helpful. I think their whole lifestyle, you know, they walk to the market, they, they're, they're outdoors, they're they're in a different vibration altogether. Mm. Uh, and so I feel that we can handle small amounts of these things and that and that we shouldn't it shouldn't be if we're drawn to that and we want to partake in that. It shouldn't be a an absolute no. Shut the door on that uh, completely. But to, of course, allow things in in small, moderate amounts and on with enough time in between for the body to acclimate and to reset and to begin again so that we're not just you know, slamming it every day and asking it to, to bear the brunt. And here is the deal, Emmerich. Here's the deal. Mm. You know, um, if, 
if people can get away with it and they can for about 40 or 50 years, okay? Mm. So what that means is uh, some pa- patients would come into my clinic all the time and they'd be in, maybe in their early 60s or something and they would say, you know, blah, 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 I have this going on. And I would say, you know, let's check about your diet and your nutrition, your chemical balance, et cetera. Let's just evaluate that while we're looking at everything else. And, uh, and I would, you know, the test result would come, come and it would be, they would be too acidic. And so I would say, you know, you need to lean away from these kinds of foods and enhance these kinds of foods for a while until your system can become more alkaline because it's too acidic and, and the acidic condition is mm. rough on the cells they break down too easily they don't repair the new cells that are birds are weaker than they should be it's just you know, it's just a nasty situation so but and they would say but i've been eating this way all my life and it's never been a problem you know mm. why now and and i say because you've been eating this way all your life that's why now <laughs> <laughs> Level, you know, it incrementally was sneaking up below the surface of awareness and then a little bit more and boom, it's too much. So, uh, so it's just a matter of learning how to navigate these kinds of things and, um, and work with this in a way that, that we can take, you know, our own health into our own hands, you know, to a much larger degree than we have historically and allow our bodies and our lives to be a reflection of a greater sense of harmony than, uh, than they have been, even if they were able to buffer it and compensate for it and, you know, make up for it along the way for a long time. It doesn't mean that it was good for us. It, mm. it just means we got away with it. And so, and so we want to learn, okay, so then how should I operate? that I can bring the system back into harmony. Lots of ways to approach that. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, yeah, I find it kind of remarkable that even like breathing in particular isn't, has an alkalizing effect on the body. It's, it, yeah, it's just, it's almost like it's written into nature and we've just got to learn as you've been guiding us today as well to just not get in our way too much, (laughs) you know, just sort of allow the natural order of things to drop in. And when we can notice that the natural order of things aren't working for us, there are tools that you've presented to us today. I've also shared before and I'll share again, we'll put the link to activate the healer, the meditation in the show notes below. Dr. Sue, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to sort of find your work online? I'll let you share that. Sure. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, it's drsuemorter.com, D-R-S-U-E-M-O-R-T-E-R.com. It'll take you to the website that introduces three main schools that we offer, one in bioenergetics, kind of the things that we're talking about here, higher states of consciousness, one that has hands-on healing and learning how to remote heal and heal yourself and in those sorts of ways of moving energy and learning how to feel that energy more effectively. Everyone can dial into that. You don't have to feel like you have, have to have special you know, senses and or or special powers to be able to uh, to drop into that, and uh, and then also the Body Awake Yoga School that I mentioned, where I'm teaching people how different yoga positions also facilitate mm. moving this energy through the body uh, more readily uh, by putting the body into these sacred geometries that cause the energy to rush into its true state instead of being compromised by those wobbles and you know distortions and and uh, things that we were looking at earlier, and so. Uh, there's a lot there. I teach online courses and in-person courses and have healing events and free transmissions and all sorts of things that are available at any level of involvement that somebody would like to, to plug in. So, yeah, and I would invite you. Yeah, and I invite you all to check out Dr. Sue Morda's YouTube channel as well. There's lots of plenty of free stuff coming out there that you can actually access as well. And it's very profound, the conversations that... Yeah, as you can tell, probably in today's conversation, we've covered a lot of ground really fast in a very short amount of time, and the transmissions that we receive on YouTube are no, no, no different. Dr. Sue, I, I could thank you for today's episode and the conversation, but really, I can tell, you know, it's all the way from, you know, the dinner table with your father, it's a lifetime's worth of work that informs this conversation, so just deep, deep gratitude. Thank you so much for who you are and what you do and how you keep showing up in the world for the benefit of all of us. Thank you. It is my great, great honor to do so. It is, it is my playground. And so I am blessed to be here with you. And thank you for what you're doing of bringing all of us together in the way that you are so that we can hold the space for uh, helping one another. So thank you. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave us a comment. And if you want to stay in tune for every, the new episodes launching every Monday, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay inspired to evolve.